Hi guys, welcome back this week. So I'm just editing up the vlog now and basically this week is going to be a sort of tutorial on making a canvas, a handmade stretcher and uh, how to stretch the canvas and how to prime it properly for oil painting. Yeah, let's go into the reasons a little bit. I have a friend here who's just taken up the hobby of painting and um, he was buying these kind of some cheap basic canvases that are just really low quality and I said uh, well, I'd love to show you how to make one from scratch and maybe that can also feed into your passion and feed into, you know, how to do it properly. He's quite, he's quite interested in, in doing things thoroughly and mastering the art, the craft side of, of um, painting. And obviously one of the fundamental, one of the fundamentals of that is using good quality materials. You're not gonna end up with a decent quality product at the end if you don't have decent products in the beginning. And to buy a canvas of that quality is just insanely expensive, especially if you're just a beginner. But to make it is financially quite cheap, although a little bit laborious. So, yeah, let's go back. One of the fundamental reasons that I'm doing this vlog is to kind of give back to the community a little bit in the sense that, um, well, I, I really believe that you, 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 if you're in a position to give back, you, you should, and, and most people take that as financial. Uh, I know that I especially did in the past, but I've come to realize that, um, you know, there's a lot more to life than just money. And if you've got something of worth, um, be it information or, or uh, an abundance of something, um, then uh, if you can afford it, then why not give back? So I invited him down to the studio and he was a little bit camera shy. Um, yeah, in his line of work as well. He, uh, you know, he's a, he's a doctor and he prefers to kind of keep, um, keep a, a profile off the internet if possible. And I can also respect that. You know, I, I upload these videos, but it doesn't, doesn't really shout about my private life. This is my um, public persona, if, if you follow me. It's not, um, you know, it's very much me, but it's what I choose to show from my professional, um, from my professional life, from from my work, you know, so to speak. But I digress, as usual. Yeah, so I recorded the processes of making the cameras from start to finish. I've talked a little bit while I was in the studio about certain things, but basically as I'm editing it um, chronologically when things don't make order, we'll cut back here and I'll explain what, uh, what it is that's going on. So, I'm gonna dive right in and um, show, you, show you from start to finish how to make this canvas. Let's go. Okay, so to begin with, we make the subframe. We're cutting using the miter saw 45 degree angles with our wood. Then we, once, once, once the cuts are made, we put them together, we glue them, and then hold them together with staples. The staples aren't really structurally doing anything. They just hold them, uh, hold the wood together while the glue sets. So now this is the top beading that sits on top of the, the frames that we've made over here. Basically, we're just cutting the 45 degree angle now. We're gonna use two techniques. We're gonna do one by hand and one using the miter saw. Vincent is, is a bit of a craftsman, so he wants to, wants to have a go at doing everything by hand. And no one judge our use of the hacksaw. It's because the depth of the other saw won't go through. Uh, all the way. We're not complete imbeciles. So Vincent's beading has now been cut successfully. I'm just cutting mine using the miter saw. We're kind of having a little bit of a competition. We're gonna see whose is the neatest and we're just playing around with two different techniques. So everything's been cut now, the subframe and the beading, and this is just attaching the beading to the main frame. Again, using glue and some nails. Again, uh, the nails aren't really structurally doing anything. They're just holding everything in place while, uh, while the glue sets. 24 hours later, it's going to be uh, bonded and, and uh, incredibly difficult to uh, pull apart, even if you wanted to. We've made our frame. We've got our sub frame and our battening on top. The reason this is on top is to elevate the canvas so it only touches the very outer rim. If we were to not put this frame on, uh, this, this outer beading, then the canvas would sit squarely against the wood and when you paint obviously it's going to pick up paint and you'll be able to see a very distinct line and that's what nobody wants on the painting right yeah canvas it's it's a waste of time to cut the canvas it's much easier to just do a small incision and then rip it 
So we're going to roughly measure it out now, and then I'm going to explain how to um, staple the canvas and uh, make sure it's taut. There's also a little bit of kind of origami involved. We're going to fold the corners in a nice neat way, and I'll show you how to do that. And uh, lastly, there's the priming to do, and we'll discuss that later. You want to squarely frame it and, and imagine about a 10 centimeter border around it. Uh, that's going to be enough canvas to fold over and obviously if it's there it's not as nice. You want it to be about there. Okay. If it's over though you're just wasting canvas. Yeah. So we've got our canvas frame, our canvas sheet cut now and um, yeah we're going to go about tightening it. So what we want to do is make sure we get uh, most of the wrinkles out and the way you do that is instead of um, tacking from one corner and following it around the whole frame you're going to start in the middle follow the opposite side and then and then uh, so forth so forth and so forth exactly that. how do you say that i suppose we'll just show you and, and that will be uh, that will be easier So you can see how I've just I've just pulled that very taut and it's made a ripple. Now none of this is an issue because as we as we pull it each side, we're going to check and we'll finally and we'll finally go to the corners and tighten them up. So uh, uh, hopefully it goes well. Otherwise, it'll be quite embarrassing. <laughs> Quite nice. Right, so we're gonna go in and show you how to do a corner. This is how you do it. Okay, pull this tight first, then pinch it here, pull this up, and pull this across as well. As you pull this across, tuck this one under, and suddenly you've got this quite neat um, frame. Right, so now that's nice and neat. You can see the, the clear uh, where the fold is and I am personally quite happy, happy with that. So stick a couple of staples in to hold it together and you've got one corner perfectly done. Now the only other thing is you've got to keep an eye out on which way you are folding it. It's nice to have it all, you want the fold the same way on top and on the top and bottom. You don't want it to be, um, yeah, uh, you don't want it to not be the same. Canvas is nice and taut. Yeah, we'll put this to the side, and then uh, next stage is the priming. Now we've got to do Vincent's piece. So, last but certainly not least is the rabbit skin glue layer. Now, this is a priming layer, and the intention of a priming layer is to create a barrier between your raw canvas cotton material and the paint that you're going to put on top. Now all paint's quite corrosive, so probably not in your lifetime, but over the lifetime of the painting, 100, 200, 300 years down the line, uh, I mean they say it rots. They basically, the, the, the corrosive nature of the oil paint um, eats away at the canvas um, unless you have this protective layer. Now some people use acrylics or gessos or um, uh, even some people use emulsion paint. Uh, the danger with that is it's, it, I mean, it cracks and, and I find it very low quality. But I personally prefer rabbit skin glue. It's a, there's a tradition there. Sadly, it is using animal products of which I don't really agree, but I haven't, I haven't found a, a viable alternative yet. But I have, I intend to look into that. Going back, we're gonna use this glue. It's um, granules to pellets, you soak it, Soak it for at least an hour. Most people prefer to do it overnight, and then you gently heat it up uh, without letting it go, without letting it boil. That actually reduces the strength of the glue and the, it reduces the quality. This glue is then thinly applied. I, I actually do another coat the next day, which I haven't recorded. But but yeah, this next shot is is us record is us um, is us putting the glue on, and then the canvas is finished. <laughs> So that was 
kind of the start to the finish of making a canvas, um, of making a stretcher and a canvas, of making a stretcher and stretching a canvas, of making a canvas. I hope that was informative for those of you who are watching it for those reasons and entertaining for those of you who are just watching it for whatever other reason. Um, I've changed my upload time or I'm about to change my upload time. In the past I've been uploading every Friday morning. I thought maybe it's a little bit early, 6am is a bit annoying. So I've decided to kind of um, change it up and from now on I, it's going to be um, uploaded in the evening if you're based in Europe and in the afternoon in America on a, or every Wednesday. So that's Wednesday evening or Wednesday afternoon if you're in America and they're basically my two biggest demographics out of my massive, massive following. So if you're somewhere else in the world, it will be somewhere in the middle of those two or somewhere entirely different. Yeah, just to let you know, and I'll see you next week. Okay, goodbye.